drug abuse has exploded over these past few years. Now, while the problem is obvious, solutions so far have been anything but. 1,339 EMS patient contacts in a four-month span. Ambulance, what is the address of the emergency? A dozen calls a day. It could be an instant high, instant aggressive, or death. Now, they're playing Russian roulette with their own body for $5. Synthetic cannabinoids, known as K2, are terrorizing the streets of Austin. Despite its name, it's nothing like marijuana. Just ask Austin Police Department Assistant Chief Jason Dusterhoft. My biggest concern uh, is people are literally comparing marijuana to K2. They're nothing. That's like comparing marijuana to heroin. And Dr. Adam Winstock, who runs the London-based Global Drug Survey, which collects and analyzes data to make drug use safer. It, it was a great marketing ploy by people trying to sell synthetic cannabinoid products, saying, hey, this is a bit like weed. That marketing has led some to suggest that the answer to beating synthetic cannabinoids, legalizing marijuana. In 2014, the first year marijuana was legal in Colorado, the Drug Policy Alliance reported arrests for synthetic cannabinoids in the state dropped by 50 percent. There was probably an opportunity three or four years ago before the drugs became entrenched before they became sold, marketed, and got their market, where actually, if cannabis had been more freely available without fear of recriminations, it may have stopped the stem. Now, Winstock says marijuana legalization would have little impact in the overall battle. Moving forward, we face three key challenges in defeating the dissemination of the drug. First, its price tag. The cost for synthetic cannabinoids is low. That makes it popular amongst the homeless. Weed is expensive. Synthetic cannabis products are. You go down to homeless people and go, hey, would you rather smoke weed than this? They'd probably go, I can't afford weed. It's an issue front and center in downtown Austin. The bulk of the problem surrounds the Austin Resource Center for the Homeless, just one block away from APD headquarters. When you look at it and it's $5 a stick to just go get K2, that's cheap. Challenge two, there's no field test for synthetic cannabinoids. And then we're looking at a process that can take up to six months just to test the substance. Dealers get charged, then get right back out on the streets. If I catch you with K2 on it, I'm going to identify you, and as long as you don't have any other warrants, I'm going to have to let you go. Which brings us to challenge three. The drug's composition creates a continuous game of catch-up. <laughs> Our laws and resources have been slow to adapt. Until now, suppliers could slightly modify the ingredients to evade penalty. The law has changed, where now uh, it is a much more wide array of chemical substances, whereas before it was very specific. That helped us. That expanded list makes it more difficult for manufacturers to skirt the law. Since October, Dusterhoff says they filed more than 100 first-degree felony arrest warrants. It's why APD focuses on arresting the dealers, warning everyone else. APD is sending more resources to the Arch, but the department is still understaffed. I don't want our number of police officers to be like our traffic problems. If we ignore it long enough, we're not going to be able to afford the fix. It's going to get so far ahead of us that it's too expensive to take care of. Duster hopped expressed confidence that Austin City Council will address the officer shortage, helping them fight the spread of synthetics. It's a problem APD and all of us can't afford to ignore. Austin Mayor Steve Adler says he's had no discussions with local law enforcement about future marijuana legalization. As for that six-month wait on synthetic cannabinoid results, Dusterhoff says APD is working to find a test that would cut the wait time down to just one month. I'm Michael Perchik, KVU News, Nightbeat.